Imola is the first European round of the Formula One Championship in 2022. It's got a rich history, but it's also a very mixed one. Here's a short view back to the past on the controversy and tragedy at Imola. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. Imola was built in 1953, but it didn't join the World Championship trail until 1980. It did host a couple of non-championship F1 races before that, most notably the 1979 Dino Ferrari Grand Prix. Dino Ferrari was Enzo Ferrari's son who died tragically young at the age of 24 in 1956 and has also given his name to the circuit. That race was won by Nicky Lauda in a Brabham Alfa Romeo, his last victory before he retired from F1 the first time after a close battle with Ferrari's Gilles Villeneuve. Imola's first World Championship Grand Prix was actually the Italian Grand Prix in 1980 when it replaced, just for one year only, Monza. But after that it got its own race, the San Marino Grand Prix, so Italy got two races. It didn't take long for controversy to find its way to Imola. Ahead of the 1982 race, F1 was in the middle of the FISA FOCA war. Basically, the FIA or governing body was fighting the teams, the British based teams, for control of the sport. Controversy broke out after the 1982 Brazilian Grand Prix when both Nelson Piquet driving for Brabham and Keke Rosberg driving for Williams were thrown out over illegal water cooling, or at least what some thought was illegal. It exploded and the result was that most of the teams boycotted the San Marino Grand Prix. Really what that meant is that the race boiled down to a fight between Renault and Ferrari. These teams were aligned with FISA and therefore didn't boycott the race. Once the Renaults blew up, it left the two Ferraris of Gilles Villeneuve and Didier Peroni out front. And this is where the controversy started on track. Ferrari held out the slow boards. Villeneuve took this to mean that he could win the race. He'd been doing the leading, he thought he was the quicker driver. Peroni didn't quite see it the same way, and the two cars passed and repassed during the latter stages of the race. Villeneuve, until the last minute, thought that Peroni was playing to the crowds, and so went along with it. It wasn't until Peroni took the lead on the final lap to win the race that Villeneuve realised Peroni was out to take victory. Villeneuve never forgave Peroni and vowed never to speak to him again and was killed just two weeks later during practice for the Belgian Grand Prix at Zolder after his Ferrari cartwheeled over Jochen Mass's march. Villeneuve's Ferrari replacement Patrick Cambay took an emotional win the following year. Alain Prost was then disqualified in 1985 for being underweight in a race where several cars ran out of fuel and in 1987 Nelson Piquet survived an enormous practice accident at Tamburello. But the next big controversy came in the 1989 San Marino Grand Prix. At this stage McLaren were dominating Formula 1 with Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost. Senna qualified on pole with Prost alongside and suggested that they not attack each other on the first lap. In other words, whoever had the lead at the start would be allowed to keep it. At the first start, Senna led from pole, Prost was in behind, no problem. But then Gerhard Berg's Ferrari had another enormous crash at Tamburello and caught fire, bringing out the red flags. At the restart, Prost beat Senna away and he thought that he should have the lead. But Senna dived down the inside on the run to Toaster on the first lap to take a lead he was never to lose. Prost thought this was duplicitous and it made tensions between the two drives even worse. It became almost impossible for the two of them to work together and it was really the start of the saga that led to Prost leaving for Ferrari and two targeted deciding clashes at Suzuka at the end of 1989 and 1990. And now we come to the worst weekend in motorsport history at Imola and one of the worst anywhere. The event started badly in Friday practice when Rubens Barrichello suffered an enormous accident in his Jordan and had to be taken to hospital. Things got much worse on Saturday when Roland Ratzenberger driving his Simtech went over a curb and damaged his front wing. He decided not to pit and go on to a flying lap, but the wings failed when he was doing around 200 miles an hour on the run to Tosa and he crashed into the wall with fatal consequences. Ratzenberger's death was the first at a Grand Prix event since 1982 and the first in the current F1 car since Elio De Angelis in 1986. An already terrible weekend came even worse on Sunday. There was a multi-car accident at the start which brought out the safety car. Now, drivers have complained about the pace of the Aston Martin used in recent Grand Prix, but in 1994 at Imola, the safety car was an Opel Vectra. To UK ears, that's a Vauxhall Cavalier. The pace behind the safety car was incredibly slow and there were even rumours that the brakes had started to fail on the safety car, making it go even slower. At the restart, poleman Ayrton Senna led in his Williams chased by Marcus Schumacher's Benson, the car that won the first two races. Senna was under pressure with the difficult handling FW16 after the rule changes had meant all gizmos had been banned. Going on to the second lap of the restart, the Williams inexplicably went straight on at Tamburello into the wall, an estimated impact speed of around 130 miles an hour. Senna was airlifted to hospital and later pronounced dead, but the drivers at the track didn't know that until later. At the restart, 
Schumacher took his third victory on the trot, but there was no joy in the paddock. By then, everyone knew that Senna had also died, and following off on Ratzenberger's death and Barrichello's accident, everyone knew that changes needed to come. There was a lengthy court case over Senna's accident, but it's never been really proven what caused it. What it did do was change the sport forever. The Grand Prix Drivers Association was reformed. Max Mosley at the FIA looked into ways of improving safety in the sport, both with the cars and with the tracks. Some of the changes to the tracks as knee-jerk reactions were not popular, with some quite bizarre chicanes being used at places like Spa and Barcelona. But longer term, the changes were needed. It started a safety crusade, which continues to this day and has resulted in such improvements as the Halo, which arrived in 2018. There are almost certainly a large number of drivers, both on road and track, who have survived accidents thanks to the changes that came about after the San Marino Grand Prix in 1994. Imola was, of course, also heavily revised. Most notably, a chicane was added at Tamburello and a second chicane was added on the run down to Tosa. The track lost some of its character and overtaking was made more difficult, but few would argue that the changes weren't needed. Damon Hill, Ayrton Senna's teammate in 1994, took an emotional victory on the revised Imola circuit in the 1995 San Marino Grand Prix. We don't want to give the wrong impression about Imola. We've just picked out the biggest stories from the sports history at that venue. And there have been plenty of good races and exciting moments there, not tinged with tragedy. Most notably, Fernando Alonso and Mark Schumacher's fantastic duel at the end of the 2005 San Marino Grand Prix that Alonso won by two tenths of a second. I'd also argue that was one of those moments where everyone realised that Alonso was the real deal and of course he would go on to win the World Championship that year. Schumacher got his own back by winning the 2006 San Marino Grand Prix ahead of Alonso. After 2006, Imola fell off the F1 calendar but it got a reprieve thanks to COVID-19. The truncated calendar of 2020 meant that Imola may return as the Emilia Romana Grand Prix. That particular race wasn't particularly exciting, but the 2021 edition in the wet, which always helps spice up Formula One races, or indeed any type of races, was one of Max Verstappen's best wins of his championship winning campaign. If you like this video, be sure to click the like button or the subscribe button, and do let us know in the comments if there are any other stories you'd like us to look at in a short view back to the past.